Our next step is all about plugins and we don't actually need a lot for this, but we're going to go up here to edit and then click the plugins folder or plugin option. And then in here, we are going to search for Niagara, which will then bring us a few options. And what we really want is the Niagara fluids, which we'll be using later on in our project. And once you click it, it will, you know, obviously say this is a beta version and you should be cautious, but it's fine. It works okay. I'm going to ask you to restart. You don't have to restart straight away um, because you basically want to um, have a look and see if you've got another plugin enabled, which is the movie. Just type in movie in there and you'll have movie render queue. Now, some people will have this already enabled by default. If you don't, please check and make sure that you do. If you need any additional render passes from what you're doing, you could actually take this on as well. Uh, it's not important, but you know, it's always nice to have, like you could actually, um, you know, render out some different passes if you'd like from there. But once you do that, you can press the restart button on here, select the level, and this will allow for uh, those two plugins to take into effect. You might have some shader to compile, but that shouldn't take too long to get it done. Now, once your scene opens again, you'll notice that it's back to the uh, level that we previously had open when we opened the project. And this is because by default, Unreal Engine will have a default level to start with. And that is basically this one in here, which is called main. Now, I actually recommend that you keep it this way because you then always have a fallback level to come to in case your Unreal Engine starts crashing whenever you open your own sequence, your own map from here. So let's say you do something to the map that breaks it. And then whenever you open the project, because it tries to open this map, it crashes immediately. Then you're gonna have a serious issue on your hand. So opening the default map, the main map, which has nothing in it really, means that you always have a way to open the project without it crashing directly. But if you must set the level to this when, whenever you open it, then go into um, your project settings over here. And then you do have some uh, options where it says maps and modes. And then you have editor, startup and game default map. So what you want is you want to set this up to your new level main cinematic. And once you do that, whenever you open Unreal Engine, it will default to that map. But again, I do not recommend this at all unless you are going into production and you want to open that because it's part of a i don't know for example the, the game mode and whatnot but in this particular case you just don't want to do this okay so we're now going to manually open our our level um and this is it now one thing uh, that i want to do now is go through the assets that we're going to bring and the first bit is the assets that we're going to get from Sketchfab, which is an incredible resource for you to get into. And Sketchfab is actually owned by Epic now. So they're actually going to get this completely, um, you know, put together with the rest of the Unreal Engine sort of um, setup anyway. So for this particular um, case, we've got the Walner's Goblet. Uh, I'm using this one, which is an asset made by the graphics geek and it's an incredible asset i really love what he's done here and basically he offers it for free and i want to show you something about this asset because as i said you can download it i'm gonna have the link in the description um this uh sketchfab, sketchfab has an option for you to be able to visualize how the asset is being created so you can have a look at for example the base color and on normal maps, you could have a look at the emissions, if there's any. You can have a look at the wireframe of this as well, which shows us this is quite a high, I wouldn't say high, high poly, but it's definitely up there in terms of poly count. So that's pretty good because you've got more geometry to work with. It shows us the normals, the uh, matcap surface as well, um, or without the surface. You can also check the UVs. Now, this is important because you're looking at these UVs and you can see there's multiple tile sets and you can see where the seams are. Now, you may not like these seams and you may want to recreate them, but if you change anything here, then the materials themselves will need to be, the textures will need to be redone as well. Now, if we have a look, I've actually downloaded it already. And let's have a look. Um, this is the this is the sort of the uh, archive that comes with it, and I've extracted it using a um, 7-zip or unzip, WinZip or WinRAR. You can use any of those to down to extract it. So you're gonna have a texture in a source folder. Generally, the source contains the model. The textures contain the textures. But in some cases, when you go in the source, you'll find another um, you know archive. You can right click that. 
and then you can also extract it as well and then double click and what you'll notice is that we actually have the texture folder again which is the same folder as previously and then we have two meshes they um, so the person who's made this has offered a low poly and a high poly because we're making a cinematic we're obviously going to go for the high poly because we want the, the highest level of geometry for this that we can get our hands on now i want to show you something about the textures so in here you're going to notice that we've got all the textures that go into each of the you know of the sides of the material so in the in the sorry of the mesh but what's really important here is the uh, fact that these materials have 1001 at the end 00203 and then again 123 123 what does this mean well effectively this means that this is a udim this is a mesh that's using udims and if you don't know what UDIMs are, I would definitely advise that you go and have a look on the, the tutorial of it. I do have a tutorial on my own channel as well. Just type in UDIM and you'll find a good tutorial about what UDIMs are and how to use them. But effectively, it's giving you a lot more resolution on your mesh by uh, separating different parts of it into tile sets of textures. So you can have more resolution because generally these tile sets, they can... You know, you can have a, the same texture here and the same texture here, but it's sort of expanding between two different UVs so that you get higher resolution. It's a really nice workflow. But we've got to get Unreal Engine to work with these. So how do we do this? Well, basically, back in Unreal Engine, you go into your project settings and then type in here at the top, uh, virtual texture, sorry. Right, and then you'll see in here, you've got enable virtual texture support. So you click that, and then you've got some other options in here if you'd like to, uh, for opacity mask, for anti-isotropic filtering, and so on. You can tick those, but I believe it just increases your um, the amount of shaders that need to be compiled after. But either way, once you do this, the system will ask you to restart. You can't see it because it's in the corner of my screen on the right side but yeah it will say something around here this is a big this is your biggest you know like, like full screen um, you'll have a pop-up in here to say to restart so then you press restart now and it will lo start ro loading up unreal engine again and it will also start to compile shaders and you can see it in here it starts to compile 7000 shaders and this happens every time it's so not every time when you open the project i mean this happens for the first time every time you enable uh, virtual textures so just be mindful of that because you're gonna have to do a bit of waiting once you enable it but that will allow you to start using UDIMs like I've said and it allows you to do other more interesting stuff with textures as well uh, we're gonna go through some other settings in the engine later on in the in the in the uh, course but uh, until we get to that stage let's just uh, get our setup done for our meshes